Hello everyone, this is Jeremy Peabody. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to make clouds in Photoshop. Uh, the thing that I've learned about clouds and doing skies is that there's two gradients going on here. Uh, one is a low saturation to a high saturation, and the other one is um, a, it, well it's still a uh, low saturation to, or high saturation, but really um, a big contrast in, in the values there. And those, I like doing um, high contrasts in, in the clouds because it just makes it a little bit more dramatic. So I think the only rule that I've really found with um, making clouds is uh, the gradient. And um, the when, when you go from a light value to a dark value, um, there's a point where you're going to increase the saturation between the, the light and the dark. Um, it's it's kind of almost like a wave. Um, if you've done any studies on water, um, where you have the um, diffused light coming through the water, uh, the saturation when the light comes into it, it just increases. Uh, you know. Um, you, you have all these, you know, the scattering of color basically in the clouds that's going on. Um, and so what gives you that glowing effect that um, if you just put white and black together, it doesn't, it doesn't glow. It, but if you put white and black together with like a, um, a gradient of a, a higher saturation color between the two, um, it would appear like they're more glowing and so that's what I do with the clouds here uh, as you can see I'm, I'm actually you know using a little bit of the, the sky blue um, that I have there at times I'll increase the the, uh, the value uh, just to give the effect that I want um, but not only with um, an increase in saturation between the lights and the dark colors um, but you also want to do a mixture of soft and hard edges. Um, and, you know, you're obviously going to pay, pay attention to your forms uh, going on here because clouds have forms. They have, you know, um, they have density, you know. Um, so you, you need to, to shape that. And um, I guess what makes it interesting is, you know, uh, going from from light to dark, and, you know, putting the edges in there. Uh, right now, I'm putting in very thin edges. It gives the illusion of distance. Uh, you know, as I get closer, I'm going to increase my brush size to um, again give the, the illusion of distance. Um, but I'm I'm doing it over um, a higher saturated value. I don't know if you can see it there, but the the there is a brighter blue. Um, in with the, the the shadow that I put in those clouds there, and when you put white right on, well, it's not even white; it's not a pure white there. But when you put it right on top, and it just pow, it just pops right up, and um, it gives a really nice effect. And um, so um, I don't do clouds just like you know <laughs> out of the sky. I don't pick clouds out of the sky, right? I just I actually find a photo reference. Um, and I don't copy it. I, I use it as a reference, um, just for some like guidelines, really. Um, and I suppose you could, you know, probably invent clouds on your own. Um, you know, I could show you the the image that I did with this. It's, um, you know, it's completely different. You know, I'm just using it as a guideline. It's it's not even uh, not even similar. In, in any sense. The, the colors aren't even the same. So uh, let me see what else can I say here. I worked in a very low resolution, um, not, not very big at all. I actually forget what size it is, but it's it's really not very big. Uh, and of course I always work zoomed out because it just gives me a, a, a better view of, of what's going on. Um, the brushes that I'm using were you know free brushes from uh, the internet. I really forget the source, and uh, I apologize for that. You know, I, uh, I've sampled many brushes, so I don't know where I found this set from. But I'm basically just working between uh, three different brushes that um, that exist. Uh, um, it, 
I wish I could remember the source because uh, you know I really like to to reference uh, that. If if anyone knows, you know, please just speak up. Uh, I'll see if I can find uh, who did it, but I, I believe it was from DeviantArt and it came in you know one of the packs um, that you know there was something like you know, a hundred brushes on there. It's just really kind of crazy, and um, I, I like these. Um, brushes for for the clouds but I you know you can make your own cloud brush uh, so what I'm doing uh, you know right now is um, creating a gosh a uh, um, perspective I guess if you want to say on, on the clouds because the clouds you know sit on a perspective um, I did some earlier some clouds earlier to warm up and you know um, I was actually it was like I was positioned on top of the clouds uh, in a bird's eye view um, and while that's good and everything, um, if you want to do some landscapes with some clouds, um, you really need to to be a you know a, a bug's eye view. Really, you need to be underneath the clouds, and so um, you need to put in that that um, that plane that uh, that perspective plane for for the clouds. So um, that's what I'm doing, and um, so way in the distance. Uh, what happens? The, there's so much air between you and the, the horizon that um, all the the colors just kind of dull out and go a little bit brighter. Um, and so that's what I have there. There's a gradient going from the horizon on the, the plane layer of the clouds to um, you know the, the the layer just above you. Um, and you need to use that. It's it's going to be really kind of darker in the center, and as um, as the clouds get above you, they're you know they're really not going to change much. But you you'll see I really kind of define the, the the plane that the clouds are sitting on, just to give that illusion of the the three D space. Uh, this really didn't take me that long to do. Um, gosh, I, I guess this the the whole thing took me about fifteen minutes. Um, and it's really kind of relaxing. Um, you know, I really didn't, I really don't do my own clouds just because, you know, um, it's easier just finding some, some really nice clouds that have already, you know, someone took a nice picture of, uh, and then working them into your image somehow. But, um, I don't know, you know, I never really, um, took the time to just sit down and just kind of work out the clouds. And it's almost a little meditating. Um, and definitely gives you a nice effect, um, and it, I think you can, you know, really get what you want if you do it yourself. Um, you, you know, most times, <laughs> uh, a lot of, you know, sometimes I, I struggle with with um, the art that I'm doing, and um, these clouds actually, you know, I don't struggle, so it's just really kind of relaxing and kind of meditative for me. So I'm not sure I really have too much more to say here. Um, the, the the real important thing to remember with clouds is um, you know paying attention to that terminator line. It's that that line that separates the the light from shadow. Um, you really need to to increase the saturation there. Just that's what um, you know the light is scattering around and and really illuminating it from within. It, that's what gives it the glowing effect. That's what really um, sets the mood for the cloud and, and makes it look a little bit more realistic um, that I've found anyway. Um, you, you find Terminator lines in many different, oh, it wrote, you know, everywhere in digital art really. Um, and so, uh, you know, pay attention to that. That's um, really important. It's just something I would um, just discovered recently this Terminator line, um, and you know I never really had any formal training, so you know everything that I'm finding here, I'm studying on my own, or um, you know finding a resource on the internet. But even still, even when you you know find, you know someone says, hey, pay attention to the Terminator line, you know, you really don't understand it until you just kind of do it yourself and really experience it yourself. Just Yes, just like anything in life, you know, you're not going to understand it until you just do it. So, you know, get out there and just start painting. So, um, 
you know, pay attention to your forms when you're doing your clouds. Remember the gradients. Um, there's a lot of different gradients going on here. There's you know, the, the plane for the atmosphere behind the, the, the clouds. There's a, a gradient plane for um, the, the perspective underneath the cloud and, um, you know, on the forms of the clouds themselves. Uh, you know, they go from light to dark and, um, you know, you gotta pay attention to it, find a reference and, uh, you know, do, do some studies. You know, I don't think clouds were really all that difficult. Um, you know, once you, you just pay attention to these factors and hopefully you can do it yourself. So, uh, there's really not too much more I can say about clouds. Um, you know, I can probably do more of them later on. Uh, I've just, you know, really kind of been, uh, just kind of taking a break from things today and just relaxing and just uh, you know, doing some clouds here. And, um, so now there's really not too much more I can say. Uh, I hope you um, can can find this useful. And uh, I'm just going to let this play out for the rest of the, uh, the video here. So good luck. Happy painting. Cheers.